Hi, recently I gave a voice to my teddy. And I promised a tutorial, so here goes. Obviously there are other tutorials on something so fundamental like this. But more often than not, any kind of electronics tutorial tell you what to do and neglect why you need to do that. And even more rarely, tell you how to solve issues when things don't work first try. But it is essential to understand how things work if you want to build bigger projects which extend outside simple how-to tutorials. So I will try and give you this little extra, as well as go through a debugging exercise at the end. If on the other hand you don't care about all that, the code and the schematics are linked in the description. Right, we are building a medium quality audio circuit for a simple project such as this. High quality would fall slightly outside the beginner level, and we're not interested in that. We just want quick and easy. To help us out, Arduinos do not produce real audio signals, but rather PWM. And you'll see why this is a good thing shortly. But now, let's consider what a PWM signal is. Let's look at a signal which is half the time on and half the time off. If we run the signal through something that cannot respond to fast changes, such as an LED, a motor, or a speaker, we get the same result as if we used the average value. Now, if we keep the frequency the same, but increase the width of the pulse, the average value increases. If we make it narrower, the value decreases. Hence, pulse width modulation, or PWM. This is used, for example, to control the speed of motors and brightness of LEDs. But what if we wanted to represent a time-varying signal, such as music? As long as PWM frequency is enough higher than the signal, this can be achieved by continuously varying the pulse width. And this is what an Arduino does to produce music. Now that this is clear, let's build the circuit. You'll need a breadboard, an Arduino of some kind, I use a Uno, but it doesn't have to be, a microSD card reader and a card to store your audio files, a speaker of some kind, obviously, an NPN transistor, and a way to trigger Arduino to play audio. A push button in my case, but it could be a sensor or something else. And I've got an optional capacitor. Read up on SPI protocol. The card reader is only one of many things that use this to communicate with microcontrollers. Connect chip select pin to any I.O. pins on your Arduino. It's arbitrarily pin 10 in my case. But for the rest, you'll need to look at your pinout diagram. Serial clock is pin 13 on a UNO. MOSI, 11. MISO is 12. This is C is 5 volt supply. Note, no more than 5.5. And, and finally, ground. Next, we will use a transistor as an amplifier. If we put an audio signal on the gate of an NPN transistor, it passes some equivalent current from collector to emitter. And if we run that current through a resistor, we might expect to be able to hear audio on the output. Unfortunately, in reality, this is not that simple. This is more like what we can expect. Obviously, not an accurate representation of the input. And if we were building a high fidelity amplifier, we would need to fix this. Add a feedback resistor to prevent clipping. We would need biasing circuit to make sure that the transistor is operating in the correct region. Then isolate the input from that very bias voltage. Same with the output. And throw in a feedback cap for good measure. And each component value would need to be calculated to fit the purpose. Only then we would have a chance of the audio sounding good. Conditional to good wiring, power supply filtering, etc. Luckily, Arduinos produce PWM. I mentioned it was a good thing. It's because our amplifier can be simplified dramatically. The transistor no longer operates as an amplifier, but rather a switch, which can be on or off. Same as our PWM signal. There's a healthy current limiting resistor at the gate, but even that is not essential. It's great. Check the pinout of the transistor you're using. I simply had to end 2222 lying about. One end of the resistor goes to the gate of a transistor. The other connects to any PWM pin on your Arduino. Except for UNO and NANO. It has to be pin 9. Unless you want to change the library code. Then the plus sign of your speaker goes to the supply. 
and the minus goes to the collector of the transistor. The emitter connects to ground. As I said, for triggering I'm using a push button. One terminal has a pull-up resistor to supply. I connect the same terminal to an interrupt pin on the Arduino. My Uno has two. I picked pin two. The other terminal gets connected to ground. This way, pin 2 will see the supply voltage until I press the button. Arduino will trigger on this high to low transition. Now for the supply. I'm powering my circuit externally, so I could use the circuit and say, a talking teddy. But for prototyping purposes, you can power it via USB connected to your PC. Note that you need to connect the power to the in pin of your Arduino if you're using anything other than 5 volts exactly. VIN normally takes between 7 and 12 volts. I'm also adding a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor as good practice. You normally see one in Arduino circuits. In our case, since we're using PWM to drive a speaker, you won't hear the difference with or without, but the cap is used for filtering, and I will show you an oscilloscope trace later. Now though, let's dive into the code. There are two dependencies you will need. SD library to handle reading from the microSD and TMRPCM to convert the audio format to PWM. I think SD comes installed with Arduino software, but if not, you can find it under sketch, include library, and manage libraries. Type in SD, and it should be somewhere here. As for TMRPCM, you will need to download it from this address and add the zip file through sketch, include library, add zip library. Now for what the code does. We need to initialize the communication with the SD card reader. All you need is to add this line to your setup. So SD, begin, and the chip select pin of your card reader. Remember, it was 10 in my case, the code around it is non-essential error checking, which I will show you later in action. Next, we need a TMRPCM object, which I creatively called sound. Again, in your setup function, you will need to tell which pin to use. There are also a couple of functions which you can take advantage of. Quality. It takes on a zero or a one, the one potentially producing better quality. I could not tell the difference. Let me know in the comments if you did. And set volume. This one is important. It takes values of 0 through 7, with the higher being louder. If you set this too low, you will barely hear anything. But if you set it too high, you will hear garbage. The step size is quite big, so start with 4 and go by 1 in the required direction. In my case, 6 already sounds awful, and 7 unintelligible. The main loop checks if anything is playing and pulls the pin low in case it is not. This makes sure that the transistor is off and no hissing comes out of the speaker. Finally, my button. I set pin 2 to be an input pin with an optional pull-up, as I'm using one externally. Unfortunately, we cannot get away without using one as the internal pull-up is too weak, meaning the resistance value is too high. A simple touch of exposed metal with your finger would be enough to trigger the interrupt otherwise. To configure the interrupt to do something, we confusingly need to use its interrupt number and not the pin number. So this is something to watch out for. So the interrupt 0 on the following edge, i.e. button press, will call this function which I have arbitrarily called button ISR. Fundamentally, it stops if there is anything playing, and plays a wave file with the file name you give. Weirdly, it can play a few things simultaneously, so the stop playback is crucial. As for the surrounding code, I first need to show you what a button bounce is. Take a look at what happens when I click a good push button. A clean pulse is what you want. But not all buttons are good. Unfortunately, I don't have one at hand, so I will simulate by touching ground wire to the pin. This is called button bounce. 
The extra pulses result from the metal contacts touching multiple times upon the contact. This happens in toggle switches, push buttons, slide switches, and any other mechanical switches for that matter. As a result, the interrupt gets triggered multiple times. This if statement allows only one trigger per set time, in my case 500 milliseconds. In other words, if you tap the button very fast, it will trigger only once every half a second. So let's get this code into the Arduino. I need to connect the USB cable and upload. Right, I recorded some unconditional demands for this demonstration, which by playing over and over again, I hope to convince you to comply. So listen. Like and subscribe. On a serious note, the library can only handle WAV files of certain quality. So I will need to convert my recording. I will use an online converter, the links in the description. But whatever you may use, it needs to give you access to certain parameters. Let's see. Upload the file. The output needs to be 8-bit resolution. The audio sampling frequency cannot exceed 24 kilohertz. So anything above is out of the question. I get consistent results with 16 kilohertz. And it has to be mono. The file should convert and download automatically after a click start. There. Like and subscribe. I need to get the file onto the micro SD card. By the way, it should come without saying that the file name needs to exactly match between the card and the code. And we should be set. As I said, I will use external power supply for this demonstration. It came up to 7 volts, and it's fine, within the safe range of 7 to 12 I mentioned earlier. Like and, subscribe. and it works. Hooray! Again, you can run this off of Arduino 5 volt supply. I will swap the V in pin to 5 volt to make sure that everything has a supply. Like and subscribe. It is ever so slightly not as loud. I will swap back. And while we're talking about the power supply, let me show you what the supply filtering cap does. Look at this noisy supply line. It is much cleaner once the cap is in place. Crucial in traditional audio applications. It is normally 10 microfarad, but practically I cannot see the difference beyond 1 or 2 microfarad. 10 is just a good round number. Alright, carry on. Don't get discouraged by low sound level. You need to understand that most of the volume comes from the acoustic elements. Let me illustrate using this juice bottle, which I cut at both ends. And of course, like and subscribe. While you're doing that, let me show you something. This is a replay of a section of this video when I was wiring the switch. Have you noticed something wrong? I know I didn't. I missed the hole and my switch was not functional. I had to debug the circuit to find the fault. And this happens all the time, no matter how much experience you might have. Luckily, I was quick to find the issue. But if you are new to this, you might be banging your head against the wall, not knowing where to start. Let me try and give you a couple of ideas. I introduced several faults into the circuit. Let's see if we can find them systematically. Right, so the switch is not doing anything. Nine times out of 10, it is a wiring issue. So start by looking at all the wires. Have someone with a fresh pair of eyes take a look. And even then, chances are that you missed it. Assuming I cannot find anything, let's be more systematic and start at the beginning. The card reader. Remember the error checking code? I print to the serial monitor both when the connection is made, as well as when it fails. Serial monitor can be accessed under tools. And it says it failed. Check the wires again. MISO and MOS are easy to get wrong. Check if the CS pin is correct, if the power level is adequate. In my case, I forgot to insert the card. Try again. Reset. And connection is successful. Still no sound though. 
But remember how I said that PWM can drive LEDs? Let's connect one to see if Arduino is producing anything at all on pin 9. It seems that it does. Could it be that the speaker is faulty? If I put the LED around the speaker, with the correct polarity of course. If it lights up, it means that it is in fact faulty. I ran out of breadboard room, so I will just touch the screws, which is equivalent. No? It has to be the transistor then. I eliminated everything else. And I missed the hole again. Like now it works. But the quality is off. Could just be a poor connection somewhere. Try again. Like Nope, not normal. Check the transistor again. It's back to front. In my early days I actually made this very mistake, and it took me long before I found it. The datasheet showed the pinout like this, as opposed to more reasonable case on the right. I thought I was looking from the top, when in fact the datasheet said bottom view. In my experience it is very rarely fault in a device, but rather a human error. It works now. Let me finally show you two other issues you might encounter with this project. First, what happens if you set the volume too high? It clips. Not at the output of the amplifier as I showed you in the circuit animation at the beginning of the video, but rather at the audio PWM conversion. Pulses disappear when the input signal gets too high. Finally, if you sample it too high of a rate, you might hear something like this. Make sure your wave converter allows you to choose all, a bit resolution, sampling rate, and mono versus stereo. And that is all. I hope you found this educational. If you did, like and subscribe. And until next time.